Hi, this is Pat Love from Love Healing Hearts. And I hope and pray, Lord, that you open our ears and our hearts and our minds to hear what you are really saying. In the name of Jesus, I pray, anoint, Father, with everything you have. I'm going to read some scripture. And I'm going to pause and look up and all of that so that you really get the point that this scripture is saying. This is New Testament. We're not talking old, even though they're both as legitimate. But New Testament eliminates the argument that these things were laws of the old day. This right here, this right here that I'm reading to you, was written by the apostles, not by the prophets and the and the and the and the priests and the leaders of old of old times. This was done under the new dispensation of grace. And considering that we're under the dispensation of grace, there are still consequences, conditions, and standards that God holds us accountable to. And I'm going to read that to you because a lot of times these aren't dealt with in the churches and they need to be. Okay. That's one of the reasons why I will not have a 501c3. As I researched it, I did once. I had a 501c3 when I had my church. But now that I'm online and I am dealing straight from the Lord, from doing research, I realize that the government has too much say in the things of God. Now, I'm going to read this to you. And if you get offended, you take it to God. I didn't write it. I am reading it. I am nothing more than a waterhole, a conduit. You listen with your spirit, with your heart, and you take this up with God. Amen? All right. This is Romans chapter 1. Starting at verse 16, and I believe I'm going to read to the end because I want God's word to make it plain in every area that we have issues with and debates with. This makes it plain. Now listen to this. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek. All right. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. All right. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness. Hang on. Excuse me. Let me read that again. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. That's deep, to hold the truth in unrighteousness. Isn't that deep? Okay. Now, that's like saying preaching the gospel or proclaiming the word while living in sin. Just want to break it down just a little bit. Okay. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Okay. Being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed, listen to this, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible men. 
and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the nature. Use into, listen, excuse me, I gotta, I gotta read that again. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another. Men with men, working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was me. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God. Dis oh, did you hear that? Haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient, to parents. You hear that, young people? Disobedient to parents. You know that shortens life, don't you? Yeah. Okay. Without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, figure that one out. Implacable, unmerciful. Implacable is another word of saying cruel. Who knowing the judgment, listen, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only to do the same, but have pleasure, excuse me, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. You have pleasure in them that do that stuff. I, I don't know how to make it any plainer. This says, verse 27, and likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was me. It, <sighs> verse 26. I'm revamping that. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile. Doesn't say normal. It doesn't say, ah, uh, you know, happenstance. That just happened. It calls it vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust, one to a, one for toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly. I mean, listen, you guys, this makes it plain for those of you who question, who wonder, who think that's Old Testament uh, garbage or Old Testament um, hard hardship and, and legalism and all of that. This is being spoken in Romans, baby, during the dispensation of grace. And if this is said during the dispensation of grace, and then in the same breath, he says that God has turned them over to a reprobate mind to do the things which 
are not convenient? Whoa, that's hard. Now, you can argue with me. You can argue with your relatives. You can argue with everybody you want to argue with. But that says it as plain as it can say it. And you know, there is a scripture that says, if you resist the devil, he will flee. Now imagine what the flip side of that really means. If you agree with the devil, if you compromise with the devil, if you acquiesce with the devil, he's going to stick to you closer than a brother. And you talk about a stronghold that you cannot break loose because you have willfully opened the door and invited him in by what you chose to agree with, by what you chose to live by, by what you chose to yield to. Now, now when you think of this as a right, okay, understand there are demonic forces working. Demonic forces will tempt anybody anybody in any situation to do anything they've never done before. It's not being tempted that means you you are this way or that way. It's yielding to it that seals the deal. And that's what I have found. Most women have told me that have left a lifestyle once they started resisting and they prayed and rebuked and denounced and everything else in the spirit realm, it was no longer a stronghold because their mind, the first thing you have to do is change your mind. Well, I'm going to leave it at that and let you masticate on that one. Yeah, chew on that one. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. God bless you as you take that to the Lord in prayer.